Hey y'all, and welcome to the Southland Piper. I'm your host, Tim. Hope you're doing well today. Today I'd like to talk about corncob pipes. Uh, a lot of people have corncob pipes. Some people only smoke corncob pipes. Uh, they're, they're a good place to start uh, as a beginner. Uh, they're very economical. But uh, when it comes to my corncob pipes, there's a couple of changes that I, I like to make. So uh, let's turn around to the workbench and, and talk about that. Well, I've got a couple of corn cobs here. Um, Missouri Meerschaum, unsmoked. And this one's lost its label, but it's a Missouri Meerschaum as well, uh, unsmoked. Let's work with this one today. Now, you can see down in the bowl, um, the shank protruding protruding through the sidewall. And that's what I'm interested in changing about the pipe. Uh, corn cobs, as you smoke them, uh, you're gonna burn, uh, basically burn up this uh, shank material at the very bottom. It's just gonna get shorter and shorter and more charred the more you smoke the pipe. And so what I like to do is remove the shank We'll trim off that part that protrudes through to the bowl, and then also modify the bottom of the bowl. And, um, and that's a couple of reasons for that is, number one, you can buy um, the pipes with a hardwood plug in the bottom, but a, a lot of, a lot of um, corn cob pipes, well, you can't see that because of the label. A lot of the corn cob pipes, that's one of the most common failure uh, areas of the pipes. You too also get some cracking sometimes, but that generally doesn't necessarily stop you from smoking the pipe, but the burning a hole through the bottom of it uh, definitely can. So we're going to see what we can do to prevent that as well. Um, also, um, when when we trim up this shank, it's going to mean that the, uh, the draft hole that comes into the bowl is going to be quite a bit higher and the bottom of this bowl. And so we're gonna address that as well during that modification. All right, now the first thing I wanna do is let's take a pencil and we'll go in at the bottom and we're going to mark on that shank where it comes through. I yeah, believe you can see that all right. Yep. And then we'll remove all this. Let's see if the ferrule will pop off. May have to take a, there we go, ferrule popped off. Now these are just glued in, uh, basically with something similar to Elmer's glue. Uh, a lot of people, when they're working on these pipes, will just use Elmer's glue. So I've got to be able to remove this shank. And one of the easiest ways to do it is uh, with the microwave. Heat the, um, the stumble up, I think it's about 20 or so seconds, and generally it'll wiggle out, or you might have to take a, a um, screwdriver down in there and try to pry it out a little bit. So I don't have a microwave out here in my shop, so let me run into the house and uh, get this shank removed. All right, I'm back. You can see I've already pulled it out a little bit, but that'll just now twist on out and just that easy. This was 20 seconds. Uh, 15 might have been enough. It's still pretty warm. But um, and now you can see where I marked uh, the shank. Now some people will do this modification by uh, going in with a, a drill bit and just cutting away that, that uh, part of the shank. Some people use a, a curved wood chisel and chisel it out. But both of those methods, you do run a risk of damaging the bottom of the bowl. And this is the only way I know to, to do this modification without endangering the bottom of your corn cob. So let's put that aside and let's see what we gotta do to match up that curvature right there. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can do to shape this. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is take my jeweler's saw and cut it down to about right there. That would be the, 
the two points of what I drew on there. And then I'll probably, and y'all see me mention this tool before. This is one of those um, people that do nails. And I've got a little sanding drum on there. And I will do the finish shaping on that. Um, but there's all kinds of different different ways you can do it. You can just whittle it down with a knife if you want to. A little salt makes pretty quick work of that. And we can test fit this as we go. Um, let me... That glue that was on there, like I said, just a lot like Elmer's glue. I should have wiped it off earlier, but I'll just uh, knock the edge of that glue down. Take a little sandpaper to it when we eventually get ready to finish up. Uh, the hole looks pretty clear, so let's just press it back in there. Now, see, I could, let me extend my drum out a little bit, and yeah, I'm going to nick that off. Just a hair more. I like that pretty well. Like that pretty well. So the next thing we'll do is uh, I'll sand this out a little bit and I'm going to glue the, the shank uh, back into place. And we'll have to let allow that to dry and then we'll continue with the next step. I've got the shank glued back in now and it's continuing to dry. Um, if you look down in the bowl, you'll see that shank is nice and even with the wall and it's really hard to tell on this video but there's quite a gouge in the bottom of the bowl and that's because instead of this being a straight pipe it's what they consider a bent and it's coming in at an angle and that shank where it comes in actually digs in they have to actually drill out a little bit more of the of the bottom of the bowl the cob to make room for the shank as it comes through so <clears throat> There's two main reasons to do this. One, so you don't have to taste the burning shank uh, in the corn cob pipe, and it, that may or may not bother some folks. And then the other reason would be to protect the bottom of the bowl. If you use just straight cigar ash and water, while it does fill in some voids and stuff, it's not all that durable. Now, what I'm going to use, and I've mentioned this before in one of my other videos, is this um, Miracle Mud uh, from Aristocob. Uh, last time I checked, for some reason, their website uh, is down. I'm not sure the reason for this. I bought uh, uh, this back in December, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Hopefully, it will be back up soon. Uh, but anyway, that's what I'm going to use. 
Now, and if you remember also, you can see there's quite a difference in the, the two colors. Uh, I mix a little uh, activated charcoal in with mine, so it just gives it a, let me back out of this a little bit, gives a little bit better coloration. Uh, this is strictly for the, down in the bottom. And uh, well, another good advantage to do this, now the draft hole for the shank is got it's quite a bit above the bottom of the um, cob bottom there and so you'll always have some dottle that'll be down there that'll just soak up different moistures and such and so what i'm going to attempt to do is when we put the pipe mud in the bottom we're going to give it a nice um, you know bowl shape curved bowl shape and bring that up to uh, the draft hole so it'll be a little bit more appropriate um, as far as smoking and you shouldn't have this big chunk of, of dottle down at the, the bottom of the uh, pipe. I always mix up too much for whatever reason, but anyway, we'll, we'll start with that. Uh, this is just a little one fluid ounce dose cups that I, I use. And uh, this is just some spare water that I like to dip my finger in as I um, work on, on that. So let me add a little water. See if we end up too thin or too thick here. Yeah, I have to put a little bit more mud into that. Almost forgot. I want to tell you, I have this old drill bit, but it's matched up pretty close to the, to the size of the uh, bore. And I'm going to put it down into there until it, you can see it peek through into the bowl because I don't want to get the mud too high and close that up. So putting that there to kind of keep the airway open. I've got this fairly nice thick consistency. Uh, I want it to be able to hold its shape. So I'm going to just drop it down in the bottom. Or I may have gotten it too stiff. Yeah, let me see. Let me add just a touch of water. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. All right. And I just take my finger down in there. Get that a little wet to work it a little bit so it didn't stick and... Okay. And this is something you just gotta have to kinda learn to deal with. I've got a little, let's see our drill bit. Okay, there's my drill. Put the flashlight in my mouth. There's my drill bit. here and a wet paper towel making a mess this stuff can get a little messy and I'm not looking to like I said not looking to coat the sides or anything I want to experience the corn cob pipe here want to go down too far let's see what we got here okay and I always try to I'm, if I'm gonna I'm gonna err on the side of being too low I can always put another coat on it'll adhere just fine it needs I think just maybe I'm gonna leave it right there let it dry a little bit. The mud has dried a, a little bit and before it gets totally hard, I like to take one of my reamers and go down there and just lightly spin it on the mud to see if we can't make a little nicer bowl impression. 
yeah, I'm liking that better. So I know it's hard for y'all to, to see, but that's nice. Fairly smooth down the bottom. Let's see. I need to, may have a little bit of material up in the draft hole at the moment. Yeah, I do. And I'll get that out. But um, at this point, uh, we just let it uh, dry overnight and we'll take a, a look at it tomorrow. Well, since I've done all that I can right now with this one, this pipe, uh, it's got to just have to dry that that uh, mud does. I've got a couple other Missouri Mearshams that they were just part of an estate buy, so these aren't mine, but, uh, but it gives a couple of good examples of why uh, you'd want to do this modification. Um, this one's obviously smoked, but you see that shank at the bottom, and you see it's charred, and it's going to continue to burn, and you're just you're going to get that flavor from that burning shank. So that's one of the reasons to do this modification, and that will get shorter and shorter with time, uh, but then leaves your um, draft hole a fair amount above the uh, bottom of the bowl. Now this other one, I'm not sure what the story is. It's got a lot of bite marks on it. It has evidence of really being handled quite a bit, but it hasn't been smoked inside. It hasn't been smoked. I don't know if somebody just liked to chew on a pipe and, and such, but this one demonstrates another good reason that you want to do this modification because if I put the light there, it's got a hole in the bottom. So that's another good reason to do that. And this, this pipe could be saved. You could do that modification in, in this pipe. You could, you could start smoking it, but right now it wouldn't last very long at all. And then there will be some people say, Tim, these are $12. You know, you, used to be they were cheaper, a lot cheaper than that, but I think now most, most cobs start around $10, $12. You know, you're talking about a, a $12 pipe. What's the big deal? Throw it away. I guess that's this is the restorer in me, pipe restorer in me, that I just like to see pipes taken care of. Um, but hey, your pipe, do whatever you want to with it. Smoke however you want to smoke with it. I certainly have gotten my share of estate pipes that have been smoked till they absolutely just clogged up solid and would no longer smoke, and you could not get a pencil down through the middle of the bowl because of the cake. So to each his own when it comes to, you know, how you want to maintain your pipes. But I just thought these gave a, a couple of good examples of um, the advantages of making this modification. It's been uh, 24 hours. Um, the pipe uh, mud or mortar, as it's also referred to, is set up pretty well. I'll usually give because of the thickness of the bottom, I'll usually give it a good 48 hours before trying to, to smoke the pipe. But uh, that's it, you know, as far as what I do to these. Um, now, people talk about you should have a figure eight on your bottom of your bowl if you're correctly drilled. So I think that turned out pretty well. The inside's fairly smooth. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be totally slick, but. Came out really well. Well, that's it for today on modifying this corn cob pipe. I hope you found the uh, the video interesting and maybe a little helpful. Uh, thank you for sharing your time with me today, and hope to see you soon. Bye.